All right, guys, so this video, we are headed back down to Race Proven Motorsports to uh, throw the Minimax back on the dyno to see how it does. But first, I got new decals for Big Tex. My, my boy, Big Tex, right here. <laughs> my boy, Big Tex. Now we are gonna throw on and we're gonna load the Minimax up and then we'll transition into tomorrow. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, taking up the whole road in front of my house with a whole bunch of trucks and a trailer. Because in today's video, we are headed back down to our great friends at Race Proven Motorsports to throw post turbo and injector and tune Minimax on the rollers to see how it compares to our first time on the dyno where we actually set some pretty astounding numbers. You guys can recall, we made like 1300 foot pounds of torque and nearly 600 horsepower with that little beast that you see behind me. Now we are gonna have to get everything loaded up and we will be going over tomorrow, but first I wanted to share something that I was really excited with you guys about, and that is, well, taking this ugly, ugly big text off. So let's do that real quick. Ready, set, voila, a nameless trailer. Now, but in all seriousness, guys, I needed to make my brand known, especially on the Enthusiast rig. This is the toy hauler for Team Enthusiast right now, and well, it's not branded. We can't be marketing the actual manufacturer who actually does that. So what we did, of course, is we got some nice die cut decals that we're gonna be throwing up on the side. This is the Holy Grail, AKA the crest, really. This is the crest, the slogan, the icon of the brand. I've absolutely fallen in love with this design. It's just so clean and simple, obviously I'm biased, but we are gonna be throwing this right there somewhere. So I'm gonna measure dead center on this lateral arm and we are gonna lay this bad girl down. Oh man, that looks sick. The day I bought this trailer, I was envisioning that crest right there. Big Tex, it stayed, it did its purpose, but now we're in business, boys. All right, so what we gotta do is get the Minimax loaded up, and then we are going to switch over to tomorrow and find our way down to Race Room Motorsports. So let's get this thing up there. All right, guys, I'm gonna strap this thing up, and I'll see you tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the back of Race Proven Motorsports. It's good to be back. Beautiful day too. Beautiful day for some dyno activities. Let the bald eagles fly out of the Minimax's new setup. I'm excited to see what this thing makes today. So the maiden voyage with the, uh, as I've been calling it, like the white Iverson setup, just because, you know, post one. Yeah, whatever, you guys get it. Maiden voyage was actually a massive success. Trucks sitting pretty level with the airbags, rides astonishingly well. And really you don't even know that this is all behind you. It feels a little heavy, but with the Minimax on this trailer compared to the dually in the last upload, man, I'll tell you what, this thing feels like a featherweight. Well, sounds like they're warming up the rollers. All right, so before we head in, I gotta show you guys the dyno chart just to, you know, kind of level set on where we were post, not post, where we were pre-turbo and injectors for the Minimax. All right, so this was about two months ago, I believe. Pre-turbo and injectors, but with the 10 mil pump, three tunes. Blue tune here, 406 and 1025 on tune three. Red tune, which is tune four, 546 and 1201. And then max tune, which was tune five, made 587 and 1327 at the wheels, tune five. So what I wanna know right now is with those numbers in mind, what are your guesses? I'm not even gonna guess because I'm gonna keep a very open mind, but, but I'd say that we're probably going to pretty easily break that, ooh, God, I love that sound, 600 horsepower number. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that we could do that today. But drop your comments below. I wanna know what you guys are thinking. All right, let's get inside and see what these guys are up to today. C6, Z06 going up on the rollers. Oh man, the nostalgia right now is so real. I used to have a C6, Z06 for anybody curious. It actually looked very similar to that one right there. But that one's not mine.
For those of you guys that saw the, I'm gonna call it pre-turbo dyno video, you'll probably remember that, well, the Minimax has uh, some wider wheels on it, which creates not a problem per se, but just a little bit of fine tuning adjustment required to get this thing lined up on the dyno, as this side has a plate that sits higher than that side of the roller. So you basically, they are gonna strap up the truck. They're gonna line up the rollers and actually try and kind of shimmy the truck over just a little bit to get it to all work. As if we start rolling right now, that plate is going to considerably rip up a nice new tread pattern into our nice Nino. So again, I just wanna send a huge shout out to Fran at Race for Motorsports for having the flexibility and willingness to take on something that is quite literally never in the shop just for pure entertainment purposes for not only setting baseline numbers on the truck getting an idea as to where we are but also for providing you guys some great content so if you haven't already check out race river motorsports if you're in any awesome american muscle cars especially that of the gm brand the lslt stuff give them a follow i'm going to put their link in the description below now if you guys haven't seen the video of the pre-numbers and you want to I'll go ahead and throw that right up on the screen right now. I absolutely love seeing this thing up on the dyno. I'm excited. I don't really know what it's going to make per se, but I guess we'll find out soon. Well, hopefully today our stock head studs withstand the uh, torture that this thing's about to go through. So I got it in tune three for you. Okay. We'll start, start it there. Start it down. I don't know if I want to go to tune five or not. We're going to test the longevity of my stock head studs today. I guess we'll see what it makes on three and then see what it makes on four and then go from there. For those of you that don't know or maybe are watching my channel for the first time, that is an LLY. As you guys know, the LLYs tend to be notorious for head stud issues. And this one is going at stock head studs. We got 100% overs from Exergy. We got the S467.7 from Whirly Fab Borg Warner Turbo and the Whirly Fab Piping Kit. 10 millimeter Exergy pump. Full exhaust, DSP5 tuning as you saw in tune three and well, other supporting mods you can get creative with doing. So if you guys are waiting around, don't wait much longer. Drop those comments below. Take your guesses, see how close you get. It's kind of a fun game. All right guys, last chance to place your guesses. Here we go, tune three. did last time we're probably gonna run it a few times on tune three just to get things feeling right and then we'll go for the actual run what did it make last time? so it made 587 on, on tune five. five and 1327 tour that's tune three so far we'll run it a few more times see how it looks <laughs> So sick, guys. I can't even begin to tell you how radical that sounds in person. Dude, when that thing's loading up, it sounds so gnarly. So 630 horsepower the second time, 614 the first time, 1,100 foot-pounds the first time, 1,200 foot-pounds the second time, and it's two and three. Wow, dude. Same wheel, same tires, so we're keeping the variables consistent. Right, first dyno run, 613. Second dyno run, 630. Third dyno run there, 643. So we're right in that like 1,200 foot-pounds of torque range, roughly. And uh, yeah, we're really already trumping easily what the truck made last time, which is obviously no surprise, but obviously walking a fine line, if you will, in terms of total engine robustness. Uh, so I don't really know how far I wanna push it just to get a number as we need to keep the truck running for all the events that we have coming up or at least do our best to. So Fran, what do you think? Should we go to tune four and see what kind of change we have? Yeah, what did it pick up from three to four last time? Three to four. I like a hundred and some wheel, I, right? I believe, yeah, it was something like that. I mean, I guess we'll just see if it stays consistent. Yeah, let's do tune four and see how it goes. Sounds so sick. All right, where are we at? First run, yeah, 660, 1300 foot pounds. So that puts us torque wise where we were on tune five with the stock turbo, but we're almost 100 horsepower more than we were on stock turbo tune five. Cool. We'll get a few more runs on tune four to kind of see how the numbers average out. Fair tie? Yeah, call it fair tie. Pretty consistent. consistent. Yeah, that's great. I mean, two horsepower and Pounds yeah, a lot of move, a lot of movement there. <laughs> All right, so we just had a long and heartfelt conversation about whether or not we should crank this thing up to tune five. And being that I have some events that are coming up very shortly, I decided against it only for the fact that God forbid anything happened, the motor build and everything like that is not completely ready and the truck would be down for a considerable amount of time. So I wanted to kind of pump the brakes right here as I'd say that we're already walking on thin ice in a lot of ways, considering the factors that we talked about earlier on in the video. But with this in mind, we did really well. The truck did really well today and I am extremely impressed with just the overall performance of this setup thus far. I mean, 
for the pull up the tunes from last time. So Man, I, I got my nice little file going. Yeah. Hell yeah. 587 was what it made. Yeah, 587. Uh, yeah, that was our last pull. Was four, this is four to <clears throat> five. Yep. Last time. Yep, exactly. This is four to four. Both tunes four. Before till now. Yeah, so 120 horsepower and uh, 170 foot pounds of 170 torque. 170 foot pounds of torque. That's awesome. But even the power are like up high. It just pulls. Look at that Drastic. consistency. There is no dying I mean, there in the is turbo. 220 horsepower up top. Yeah. Wow. Significant change. That's massive. I mean, here you can see like the stock turbo is going to be real strong down low and then fall off up top. Same with the torque, but this turbo is kind of doing the opposite. Man, that. that is like the straightest <laughs> line I have ever seen. Turn five till now. I mean, still, I mean, it's up 220 horsepower and 300 foot pounds of torque. Wow. I mean, it's more or less look at these numbers and don't look at yep. these numbers. Yeah, the overall efficiency of this turbo setup, you can just see it would have kept going almost if we didn't redline the truck. It would have, because it picks up the whole way. So. Yeah, that paints a really nice perspective. Yeah, it'll be significantly different than it was before. And that's dramatically going to change our trap speeds in the quarter mile, too, when we decide to run this thing. Because yeah, I mean, the truck really did fall on its face hard with that stock turbo. It was just suffocating. I mean, even mid-range, it's up 886 torque before to 1207 now. The stock turbo, all the torque was as soon as you hit it, and then it... Goes yeah, away. and you know yes. another interesting thing, Fran, is just seeing how how efficient the turbo spool is. Yeah, yeah. We're dealing with a, a variable vein, which was the old red line, versus a fixed vein here, and you're not really seeing much of a change in terms of spoolability yeah. as it's ramping oh, up. The green line is the old one. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So still. So it's right on par. It's yeah. Not, it doesn't seem like really laggy or anything like that. Like most of these diesel truck stuff that you see that takes three minutes to spool the line <laughs> when you're at the track and all yeah. that. It don't seem like, like that. Come on, man. Get on with yeah, it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Transmission temps like 7,000 degrees. <laughs> and then just to think, I mean, we had a whole nother tune where things would have gotten really spicy, but we just uh, used a little bit of our, our brain power on that one. <laughs> our bank accounts wouldn't be happy. No. Not mine. It wouldn't affect mine. So. Yeah. No. Well, thanks for thinking <laughs> yeah. of mine for me, no buddy. Problem. I appreciate you. So all things considered right now, I think it's safe to assume, and this is merely an assumption, that we would probably be able to cross over the 700 horsepower mark on the stock motor and the stock head gaskets if we decided to go to tune five today. But as I said, kind of want to be a little bit conservative and I'm really pleased. Like, Not going to lie a little bit. I was a little bit nervous about how the truck was going to actually hold up as we were doing those pulls and loading on fuel at the end of the day. It did great. And the objective was to just basically drive this thing off of the dyno, which we're going to be able to accomplish today. Plus, I got this fancy little printout that Frank gave me as a nice little souvenir for the day. And the fact that the stock head gaskets on this truck are some sort of like factory freaks because, man, they're holding up extremely well. But I think it's safe to assume that we would cross 700 horsepower and probably 1400 foot pounds of torque if we opted in on that tune five now what we'll do is once the mini max motor gets built sometime in the future whenever that time comes because i am trying to ride out the setup for as long as possible not only because i want to to avoid the cost aspect but also because i think it's kind of interesting to see a stock loi with the stock head studs performing at this level and i gotta give all the credit in the world not to the setup but to the tuner blake has really mastered this LLY configuration. He had an LLY that he used to drag race. I think it had 300,000 miles on it with the stock head studs and it held up just fine with a very similar turbo setup, pump and fuel arrangement, all that good stuff. So I think it's really a testament to the tuning and keeping kind of that strain and stress off of the bottom end at the end of the day, which we saw right here behind us. But once the motor is built at whatever point that happens in the future, we will get the truck back down to Fran at Race Room Motorsports to run it after the fact. My objectives overall for the Minimax aren't across a thousand i don't really have a need to do that because once you get into that like thousand horsepower range the truck kind of just gets unusable and as you guys saw in some of my previous videos this truck is very usable for me in every way so i want to keep it that way so like that 800 850 horsepower would be pretty rad but that's just for some other point in the future i did want to show you something that is just really getting my inner corvette enthusiast super excited and that's the fact that uh, race for motorsports right now has i think literally the first tuned zr1 like anywhere in the country and it is just this wicked gray color. It's absolutely beautiful. Chalk this one up as a success, boys, because we are driving off the dyno. And the Minimax prevails. It lives on to see another day. That stock motor. Mwah, mwah, mwah.
All right, so I'm gonna go grab some food with the guys at RPM and I'll see you guys right afterwards. So Fletcher Cox just stopped by. He plays in the Philadelphia Eagles and I'm an idiot because I don't watch football. Um, so I walked up to him and he's like this tall. He's like standing here, he's like this tall. And uh, and I'm like, hey man, you play sports or something? He's like, I'm Fletcher Cox. I'm like, oh, hey, nice to meet you, dude. So anyway, uh, we were just chatting for a little while. Brought his Rolls Royce, Royce over here. Uh, he had a zero one that Fran had actually uh, done a lot of work to here at Race for Motorsports. And, and uh, I was telling him a little bit about the giveaways and he's like, oh, you're the guy that does the giveaways. So somehow he knew about me, I guess, maybe through uh, connections at RPM. But anyway, I was just kind of really humbled. But hey, uh, Fletcher, it was really cool to meet you, dude. And good luck in everything that you do, my man. Here we are again with another C7Z. I want one. If I had space at my house, I'd probably pick one up. Thank you again, Race Ruben Motorsports. I always love the hospitality. Coming down here is like literally my home away from home. So many great memories with, I'm gonna say my car ventures and so many more to come. Put it this way, guys. When I do get my C7Z06, when, not if, when, uh, it will absolutely be coming right back down to France. With that said, we got the Minimax loaded up. Super successful day with that truck. I am so proud of it. It just continues to impress me at the end of the day. And, you know, it's really remarkable because we, uh, we're really pushing it. We're really pushing its limits, but it's it's accepting the challenge and it's not giving up. It's not a quitter. It likes to work for it. D-Max Rhino, I got you on that plug there, buddy. But anyway, guys, there's a full look during the daytime at the white setup. Also, I mean, kind of speechless with how it came out. This is like my dream rig configuration for the trucks. And uh, man, it's right in front of me right now. I love how the enthusiast crest came out on the trailer it really looks like it was almost kind of destined to come like that from the factory and um, towing the trailer with the truck on the back is really effortless for this truck a lot of you guys have been asking me about how it does with the 14 wides and i'll tell you what it crushes it you wouldn't even know that it's got 14 wides on it this truck has always driven well with these 355s and the 22 by 14s so anyway guys i have not gotten news as to who the winner is yet for ron burgundooly we're still a little bit early in the process though that information should be down to me probably within the next week i'm hoping definitely Definitely keep your phones on as early May, probably the first week in May, is when the winner will be contacted. And I'm hoping that I can make the announcement that same week as well. I won't waste any time on getting you guys that information when I get it. So with that said, my Like League, I love you guys. Do what you do best. Have that subscribe button on your way out. And I promise you guys, I promise, I'll see you in the next upload.